Well, everybody, we're, uh, woo, bright sun. We're just outside Ballymena on the farm of Billy O'Kane's. And uh, going to grab a quick chat with Joseph, the farm manager. Joseph does a bit with us at Grassmen, evenings, part time, etc. And uh, just when we're under pressure, Joseph's Ruth's brother. So that's that connection. And Craig was out um, with the blacks filming at the slurry. And we always said we wanted to come out and see the FX is in action. Joseph has uh, commandeered our 70 60 for today and he wants to draw a bit of silage in it. But going to grab a chat with him, ask him a few questions about. We always out with contractors and we're always chatting to the drivers and the guys that run the contracting fleet. But I suppose ultimately Joseph's job is to make sure this grass goes in. Joseph! Hello. I thought. I thought you were meant to be a farm manager. I've got a day off today. You're got, oh, so you're not getting paid for today? Oh no, you don't get paid for pleasure. You don't get... <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a hard sun there, Joseph, but we're trying to still look at these mighty FXs in the background. So this is Billy O'Kane's farm? Yes. Billy has some high-end cattle. Uh, well, I am if you want to call them that. Yes, they're the pedigree cow, yes. All oh, right, okay, we're going all tiny up. <laughs> Top of his game, is that there? <laughs> yes, in, in their division, yes, I would say so, yeah. And, you know, traditionally we think good high quality silage for dairy cows. <laughs> and not so much beef cattle, but you've been quite stressed about making sure everything's right here, because I just happen to know because through Ruth, your sister yes. who works with us. Yeah. How important is it? Quite important, as, as I said to you last night, we're not quite going for dairy quality, but we're also going to be, we're not, we don't want to be far behind it because the animals we're dealing with um, is all about feed efficiency. So the point of our animal is, is to reduce our meal bill. Um, so by creating yeah. better quality silage, we can hopefully then reduce our meal bill. Our meal bill should be slightly lower anyway than the average continental, just due to the breed that we use, but it's still always trying to make everything more efficient. So, like, how does this farm make its money as such? Is it just selling to beef into the market, or is it bull sales, or what's the...? So, it's a mixture of both. So, on here we have 230 pedigree stabilizer cattle, and stabilizer is a, an American composite breed, which is a mix of Red Angus, Black Angus, Gelvey, and Simmental. So, you get the hybrid vigor. And the point of them is that they are able to produce <laughs> they are able to produce 35% uh, less greenhouse gases per kilo that goes off the farm. We do bull beef on here, um, and by doing bull beef, we are able to uh, we'll be able to finish a bull in 1.5 ton compared to a continental, which with the average would be about two ton. Okay, so you are getting that bit less meal into them, and. The they don't fart as much. Basically. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> it's, it's the point of it. Yeah. It's the, it's the low down. It's, it's the low down way, yeah. But then you guys have been using um, the Black family for years to do the silage here. Yes. Um, they they do love their old school Fords and New Hollands. Yeah. They, they've been on here for years using that and it's always worked with us. They do they do all of our work. They're, they come and they get on with the job. Their machinery suits the farm. Um, some of our gateways wouldn't exactly be the biggest, so this smaller machinery works. Um, they know the farm at the back of their hand, they were born and reared here, so it's quite handy having that. Um, they know every wet patch in the farm that we just don't have to worry about it, just tell them to go on. We actually then can use the names of fields, which makes it a lot easier, just tell them go this way, go that way, and, and it makes it far, far easier. Aye, so they just come in take control. Yeah. Well, you were in England, so I remember you helped us at the Welsh show a few years ago, bringing a tractor back home. So you, you were Harper Adams trained. Yes. Did a bit of managing or footering about in England, and then you've sort of come back home now. Yeah. But you were on dairies. Uh huh. So how has the transition been for you, at a personal level, on a beef farm? I've loved it, <laughs> mainly for the sheer fact <laughs> of a lot less hours, um, and what drew me to coming here and coming back home was the size of the place, because it's not often you can come to a farm over here that's got 230 beef cattle. Um, then we were going, because of the pedigree uh, and doing sales, 
because we, we try and sell 30 to 40 bulls a year if we can, trying to up that. So that's one of my goals is trying to improve, is increase bull sales um, because we're getting different clients coming in needing different things. There's plenty more bulls there, but yeah. it was just a new, a new exciting challenge. And coming off dairy, kind of just wanted to get a better work-life balance. And I've definitely found that here. Like, I absolutely love, I love going out every day, working with animals getting the odd trip out in, <laughs> in the machinery <coughs> now that we've been you. able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the big set of moors? Oh, I absolutely loved them. And it, it, the picture coming down the, the field was just amazing. Like you couldn't, we couldn't. John Deere leading the way, you know. <laughs> hey, I've got to get abuse for that. But, but it was, isn't, but doesn't it just show you like technology and things just improving and improving all the time. Massively. Things are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, I think we got Richard up into the. Ah, it was Richard. We got up into yeah, the Richard 350. He got up into the 350 and had a run. Like, and I, what I laughed at was he was foreign to the John Deere. You know, he probably was nervous in the sense of like he was starting to vibrate and shake at the very thought of getting into a John Deere. <laughs> but he just took it like a duck to water. So he was running around with a single more behind his. Uh, 60, 70 or whatever it was and that yes. man was just mowing with five mowers just like that you know so it was no you know obviously it's get bigger but he was able to do it no problem and you've never seen a man come out of a machine so happy he, and he uh, enjoyed that now he, he did. definitely he did because <laughs> that morning he was very stressed about silage and we all commented on it and I've never seen a man come out of a machine so happy so well are you nearly finished now is this the final hurdle Last 20 acres? Yep, last 20 acres to go in and hopefully try and get a sheet on tonight. <laughs> it's, oh, it's the plan. Oh, well, I bet you see these boys. This is like a New Zealand job here. They don't, they, these boys have to help. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rule. That is the rule, yeah. They, they, it is a massive advantage for these chaps. They do come and they uh, they give us a hand to sheet up and and, and they've, they've always done that. So there is it's quite handy to get a team of lads. You've driven a tractor all day, so it's quite nice maybe to go out and stretch the legs. That's the rest of the customers arguing now. <laughs> all their customers are saying you can cheat our pit the next time as well. <laughs> Blame Joseph, he's the one saying it. Like. But no, so you're enjoying it. So from a management perspective, it's about good quality forage. You need a bit of bulk as well. Trying to keep that meal bill down as much as possible. Are you relying solely on the bull sales to make a few quid or are you working on trying to, you know, is the farm standing on its own two feet as well? The farm is standing on its own two feet. Yeah, we, uh, we usually have about 110, 120 bulls a year um, and anything that doesn't make pedigree quality uh, will go to the meat factory. Of course, yeah. And we are able to fill it, finish our bulls. So we would finish our bulls around for average of 14 months. Uh, a one and a half ton of cake, and that's that's at a dead weight of 380 with a U minus three grade. Um, so they're doing, they do very very well for us. But the reason we are so adamant about this breed is because most beef farms, two thirds of your profit actually comes from the efficiency of the cow. So we're actually on here. We we can actually have 50 stabilizers cows to the equivalent of for 40. Uh, yeah. Continental cows on the same acreage. Yeah, well, look, Joseph, get back to the 76 they let up again. Do you like the hog? Good trailer? Good trailer. Needs a few adjustments, like we talked about steering axle and things, but part of that, very, very good trailer. Good, uh, good, very, very good first attempt. Yeah, very good first attempt on a trailer. What about the 7060? Is there a bad word you can say about it? You listen apart, to from, apart from it's loud. <laughs> I don't think I've turned the radio on all day. <laughs> <laughs> good man, Joseph. Good right. to chat to you, buddy. Thank you very Cheers. much. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Keep her lit. Mm. Where do you hear this thing lighting up, hey? This is mint. Well, yeah, FX is running there like a wee sweet, like a wee mouse eating paper. You'll not hear it now, right now. So there you go, that's Joseph. So Joseph does a bit with us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's very important that we try and chat to you know, other people and get an understanding a little bit more behind it. That young lad, he's here, he's, he's helping Billy manage his farm here and uh, fair play to him.